William Mallory Sr. learned early in life, if you're going to speak up, you better have something important to say. This goes way back when he was the teenage president. Well, you know how young girls get a little crush on a young boy. And so one of the girls said to me at that time, my name was Spicer, and she said, Miss Spicer, Bill is smart. I said, yes, he is. And she said, and honey, he doesn't just bump his gums. Well, that, that was an expression for young people. He doesn't just bump his gums. What, he, what she meant was he had something to say. And boy, did he ever. Throughout a 28-year career in the Ohio legislature, Bill spoke on behalf of Cincinnati, the underprivileged, the working class, the elderly, and the discriminated. In return, he made quite an impression on those around him. Very persistent. He's persistent. Very hard-nosed politician. He's a fighter. He's an amazing man. Very headstrong. He's always been a man of his word. He's a motivator. And how did he motivate? Within the family, we have a running joke about conversations that happen in the den. So if you got called into the den, there was some issue that my dad was going to straighten you out on. But let's start at the beginning. A native of Cincinnati's West End, William Mallory Sr. was born in 1931 to a casual laborer with a fourth grade education, William H. Mallory, and a domestic worker with a sixth grade education, Drusilla. When I was growing up, uh, everybody in the, the older people would always tell you that get an education so that you won't have to dig ditches uh, like, as I've, I've done. And uh, they told you that if you get an education, uh, no one can take it away from you. His interest in politics began at an early age. By 12, he was reading newspapers incessantly and engaging in political discussions with Dr. R.P. McLean, the family doctor and the second black city councilman in Cincinnati history. He decided very early on when he was about 12 years old that he wanted to have a positive impact on people's lives. And he set out at that point uh, to make sure that that happened. Bill attended Bloom Junior High School and later graduated from East Vocational High School. After some slight persuasion to attend college on the part of his teachers, he enrolled in Central State University and graduated with honors. August of 1951, I arrived at Central State University with an old bent-up suitcase and two pair of pants and without any money. And I began working uh, in the school, school cafeteria and I performed various other jobs uh, throughout uh, my uh, time at Central State to work my way through. Bill worked in the juvenile court for the Hamilton County Welfare Department and as a highway inspector. He also taught elementary school for eight years and was an adjunct professor at the University of Cincinnati. Well, I first met Bill uh, as an undergraduate at UC. Now, of course, I was an undergraduate, he wasn't, but uh, he taught a course on state government, which I took in 19, I believe it was 68. He gave me uh, an A, one of my few career A's. I paid him back by running against him the next uh, couple years later. It wasn't until 1966 that Mallory was elected to the Ohio House of Representatives, beginning his historic career in the state capitol. I was majority leader of the House of Representatives for 20 years. That's longer than any other majority floor leader in the history of Ohio. I served as a representative from Hamilton County for 28 years. That's also longer than anybody else in the history of Ohio. It was really good for Cincinnati and for Ohio when Bill Mallory was in the legislature. My father sponsored or co-sponsored over 600 pieces of legislation and he dealt with issues around homelessness, dealt with issues of uh, the need for daycare services. Uh, of course, I think everybody knows that he filed the suit to change the way judges are elected in Hamilton County. This lawsuit, Mallory v. Eyrick, turned out to be one of Bill's greatest achievements. Filed against Hamilton County in 1986, Bill challenged the system of electing judges on a countywide basis. From 1965 to 1985, no black attorney, whether he was or she, was a Republican, re uh, Democrat, or Independent, never beat a white Caucasian attorney head to head in the race in the, in the county. I called uh, a judge, uh, Nathaniel Jones, and I asked him, could I, could I possibly have a suit? Over a seven year period, in and out of uh, federal court, uh, we finally won the case. 
And uh, because of that, uh, the municipal court is the only court in this area that has districts, and it has seven districts, um, two, attorney, two, lawyer, two judges, rather, in each district. And since that time, uh, around 93, when we won the case, there has uh, been at least four black judges in the municipal court. He's the kind of person that sees a situation that needs to change and then he goes about uh, doing the things to make sure the situation does change. He doesn't take no for an answer. He doesn't understand obstacles. Uh, he just makes sure that things get done. He doesn't do this for the publicity. He doesn't do it for the money because uh, I can attest there's not much money in it. I used to wonder how in the world does he continue to do this for so many years and not get worn out or tired or weary. And then I had the privilege of meeting Fanny Mallory um, and, I, and I realized where he gets his strength. My dad's a good family man. I mean, he cherishes family. It's very, very important to him. And you know, through all the legislative accomplishments and all the things that uh, the family is involved in, uh, he's still dad. He's still dead. Well, there's a whole two or three generations of people that uh, Bill's inspired. He influenced them by just being Bill. Because my dad is my hero, I want to do a good job. I want him to be proud of me. But I also understand that I will never be as great as he is. That's just the reality of idolizing someone that I think is as great as my father. And now presenting a great living Cincinnatian, William Mallory Sr.